All right, welcome to milestone two for week four of the game 310 level design class. I'm just going to quickly kind of go over this milestone uh, chart that I have and then we'll look at what I've been working on. So I had decided it would probably be a good idea to put the actual time that I spent doing things on here just because um, like we had talked about the time boxing, I'm terrible at it. So uh, initial level development using my LDD and paper map to, paper map to start uh, making the levels. I was like, yeah, you know, that is going to take most of the time. Well, and then it ended up taking even more than most of the time. It took six hours and probably more. I was doing really good at writing down how long I worked on each level. And then the last couple levels, I was in the zone and I just completely forgot to write down the times. So about six hours uh, and then the second one evaluation of goals time de dedicated to ensuring that production is still on track to achieve desired goals um i'm glad that i did schedule some time for this because i did catch myself kind of getting into the creating and making things way more difficult than they needed to be for my goal and you know my goal is to introduce this type of gaming to children and I was kind of starting to make it way more difficult so um, I am glad that I put in this time to kind of go back and look at it and be like okay yeah no this is way too advanced for kids and take out that stuff. Uh, continued research, uh, attend the lectures and review the course material. Um, I put three hours on here I'm guessing like one hour for each class so two hours and then an extra hour but I didn't really, there wasn't a whole lot of like new material to cover. So I didn't spend as much time going back and going over the uh, lectures and stuff. So that ended up being a little less time than what I had budgeted for. And then troubleshooting, um, time dedicated to identifying issues, researching how to fix these issues and fixing issues. Um, I said four hours, it was probably about four hours. Um, Sometimes it takes a little longer researching how to fix issues um, just because I have a certain thing I'm trying to accomplish and finding somebody who can tell me how to do that thing <laughs> can be kind of difficult. But um, I was able to stay pretty much right on track. Honestly, it might have been like a little less than four hours that I spent doing that, but almost four. And then... Playtesting, this took way longer than I thought. And I think part of it is because I'm having children playtest my levels and very young children and my own children. And it just kind of adds to that difficulty. If I had just had, like when my husband did it, I was able to have him play the levels and I could ask him questions and get his feedback and we could talk about it and discuss. For the kids, it was more of, you know, try a little bit. Hey, what do you think about that? And their responses were not always what I was looking for. And so I'd have to be like, okay, that question didn't get me the information I needed. I have to ask a different question. And so the time spent with them playing the games, plus they're not as skilled. And so it took them several tries to get through some of the levels. So the playtesting itself, along with the interviewing and everything for the kids, took a lot longer than I thought it would. So um, this one, I had budgeted three hours, but it was more like five and maybe even longer than that. So I did follow my milestone um, descriptions. I, let's see, I don't think I added in any of this I haven't moved on yet so milestone three is still yet to come um, so here are my levels what I did for this second level is I did go ahead and add in some coins when my playtesters played there were no coins in this level um, I had made it just so that they could focus on the jumping but I think it was just too boring for them so I did add in some coins for them to try to get um, 
as they went through this level. And then since, you know, my oldest son was, he did say they're kind of boring. So I added some secret stuff. If you go like way high up here, then, you know, there's this flying box. And so just kind of enhance that level a little bit. I'm put an actual goal on here as well. I think that that was something else that um, they had something to work towards, the older ones especially. So then, oh, no, that's not what I want. Okay. Um, the next level, I think I worked on just kind of um, the balance of this one, making sure that getting to where you can fight the enemies uh, f had better flow. I had put in some power-ups and things to help with fighting these enemies. Um, I left in the piranha plants, even though everybody says they hate them, because I do think that it's a good mechanic to learn is, like, timing. Are you going to try to defeat this monster? Are you going to try to time it so you can just run under it or jump over it? Um, so even though they didn't like it, I left it in there because I feel like that's important. Um, and you know, more coins for this level as well. Then the water level is what I have been working on currently. I have had this thought of putting in... So, when my boys tested this level, they just swam up to the top, and I hadn't blocked off the top, and they just went right across the top and basically cheated. They passed up the whole entire level. So, I went back, and I added in a top, so you can't just go up to the top. But then, for, like, my husband, who's, he said this was his favorite level, he loved playing it, and I was like, well, maybe I can make something a little bit more difficult um, for them to do. So here, and it's kind of like a hidden feature. It's not, you don't have to do it, but if right before you finish the level, you come up here, this is the one spot where you can actually get up and get to the on top stuff. So then this would be where you would like go back. And then I really want to do like this underwater maze part. I have to work on it a little bit more because a lot of times, by the time you get to the end, you're Super Mario or some sort of powered-up Mario, so you're bigger. And you can't get through this one-block maze. Um, but I have, like, a one-up mushroom in here. And then if you get through all this maze part, there are monsters. And then some more power-ups here at the end and a little coin back here, if you choose to go all the way to the end. Um... I'm still kind of working on this. I don't know if I'm going to leave this maze part in or maybe simplify it or change it somehow. I'm not really satisfied with how that's working out. I like the idea. I just don't think the execution is where I want it to be. Um, so that is something that I will be working on this week. And then touching up and tweaking, oops, these last couple of levels, I need to add in some coins. And then the boss level is going to take, I think, almost a major rework because it's not really about fighting the boss. It feels like it's jumping and getting around him. And he's very easy to get around and not actually fight. So, um, and I think I am going to do some more research. I think I scheduled time to do research into other like boss levels from this type to see kind of how they did it, what I can add into my level. Um, I did add stuff way up top again, if you can jump all the way up there, but it's, I feel like right now it's just super easy to just come in here. And especially if you jump, you get, uh, I think the flower power up is here. You jump up here and then you come up here and you just go along the top. Like you can completely skip Bowser. There's no point in even having him there. So, this level is going to need like a total rework. Um, and that's probably what I'll end up spending most of my time on this week. Um, I'm going to have them play test a little bit more. And then since the original goal was for this to be for my daughter, my four-year-old, and she's really still learning just moving and jumping, um, I think that I might add in a scrolling level. 
so that way she it, it kind of helps push her through the level and she can get through it um, and then adding the things in that she can you know collect the coins and things like that so if I have time that's gonna be my extra bonus level I know in my original LDD I said something about making a level where you coordinate pushing the button with what pops up on the screen. I think I'm going to switch and do this side scrolling level instead because I think it is more of what she needs to practice and do and play um, as long as I can make it exciting enough for her to keep her interest. Um, so that is what I have been working on. I do have, let's see, it's this one. This is the, um, I'm going to mute it. I recorded the play testers testing my game. Um, so under that play testing tab, you can also go and see this video and I have commentary with the feedback that they gave. Um, but like you see, this is my daughter. And so she just kind of, she's going and she's doing it. But I feel like that scrolling one where it's like, you have to be moving forward might be a little bit better for her because then she can just practice, I don't know, maybe just jumping to get the coins and not have to worry about moving and jumping. Um, and then you can go into this where you have to move and jump yourself. So um, that's my plan. That's what I hope to accomplish this week. And this is the final week. So hopefully I can get it all done into a mostly completed set of levels. Uh, I'm looking forward to your comments, and if you have any ideas for how to gear this towards uh, very beginners and what would make it exciting but still possible, um, that would be great.